Okay, now for our latest from our investigation into a large-scale money laundering operation spanning southern Africa and the Middle East. The Al Jazeera investigative unit has uncovered evidence implicating high-ranking diplomats in Zimbabwe and some of South Africa's top banks. The gold mafia invited undercover reporters to visit their headquarters in Dubai, where rival gangs launder vast amounts of money. Alexander James has its report. Kamlesh Patni is a notorious gold dealer. He launders money using gold that he sells in Dubai. He shows undercover reporters earnings from one store. That's the cash? Yeah. We'll so, is this US dollar? No, it's no, no. You've got Rival to... gangs are competing to clean up what journalists posing as Chinese gangsters say is $1.2 billion of dirty cash. So every day have uh, coming? Yes. We, uh, every day the pressure, you know, like 10 million, 5 million. Like. Patney wants the reporters to join his existing money laundering setup. All the paper trails legitimate. Yeah. It's not like, you know, somebody can question or anything. But then it becomes the legitimate, legitimate. operation. That is the laundromat. It's finished, washed. It's finished. It's like now, then you can invest in uh, what you want. Dubai has set themselves up for being the middle of the gold trade. The key to being a money laundering haven is you have to have the financial infrastructure. And they had lax laws and no enforcement. Alistair Mathias is also based in Dubai. He uses gold to clean money for corrupt politicians. Gold is it's better than any currency. As long as you're on gold trading, you can move money anyway. Yeah, move as much as the one wherever I want to for the most part. He plans to clean the dirty cash through his gold refinery. No, the refinery in Dubai is held by a friend of mine in trust for me. It can do, I can do about 150 kilos a day. You can pay it through the refinery, you know. Well, play with the paperwork. I'll make it look like you gave me gold or something like that. Hubert Angel is a Zimbabwean ambassador who has offered to launder money through gold. I'm just again glad just diplomat in the country. He recently spoke to international delegates in Dubai about investing in Zimbabwe, free from corruption. People to people diplomacy enables individuals to trust in each other to facilitate, manage and drive investments with little or no corruption or demands for bribes. Angel is asking for $200,000 to arrange a meeting between Zimbabwe's president, Emerson Manangagwa, and Al Jazeera's undercover team. That guy doesn't take bribes. Mm. Oh, no. No, he won't. There's a big difference in appreciating somebody <laughs> and bribing. You know, at this level, people don't bribe nobody. There is somebody that's saying, uh, thank you for everything that you are doing for us, and da -da 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 -da. big difference. Angel says President Manangagwa can help with the money laundering for a fee. I think his election, I think they're spending 240 million mm. US dollars. Yeah. And that's his money. It's not somebody else, it's not the party, it's his money. So when somebody's got that money to spend on... Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. You, you give him one million, it's like a slip in the face. Kamlesh Patni denied involvement in any form of money laundering and said that he had offered to deal with funds he knew originated from illegal sources. Alistair Mathias said that he had never laundered money or gold, nor offered to do such things. He said he had never owned any refineries in Dubai. The other parties featured did not respond to our inquiries. Alexander James, Al Jazeera. And Alexander is in London for us now. Good to see you, Alexander. Uh, so your third piece into this investigation is about to go out on Al Jazeera. What can we expect from this instalment? Well, in this instalment of the series, uh, we follow the evidence to Dubai and we find all the gold mafia at work there. And it's the destination for the laundered money, but it's also a destination for the gold and it's where the gold goes to get laundered to. Gold that has uh, association with sanctions or comes from other dubious origins, it, it needs to be refined, it needs to be melted down again um, and turned into a product that is easier to sell on the international markets, and that's what happens here. And we find that the gold mafia are really controlling uh, both sides of the supply chain. They control the exporters in southern Africa, and they control the importers 
in Dubai. And this allows them to disguise very easily what is going on in the process and makes it very hard for the authorities to ask questions about what is really going on too. So the gold that they're exporting there needs to be turned into a marketable product. It's sold to the refineries in Dubai. And with a stamp of a Dubai refinery, it's a product of Dubai and it's no longer associated with with the sanctions uh, that face Zimbabwe's leaders or the issues facing the country that it's come from. Uh, doing a piece like this uh, must be quite challenging. Uh, we're going to show some pictures in a moment. I mean, can you talk us through exactly what they involved? Sure. So our undercover reporters were actually invited to Dubai by one of the bosses uh, of the Gold Leaf Mafia himself, Kamlesh Patney. And he gave our undercover reporters a tour of his operations there, of his businesses, not just in gold, but diamond traders, uh, securities traders, um, international travel agencies, and presented all of these businesses as a way to launder the money or a way to invest that laundered money. So really given an insider's view of uh, his his ability to operate there. And I think it also shows how safe the gold mafia are there. He, he was able to operate freely, uh, is able to operate freely, uh, and showed our undercover reporters round offices that he has in the, in the center of the commodities uh, trading zone there. So it, it's, a, it's a really unique insight into the gold mafia's presence in Dubai and just how uh, safe they are to operate there. Now, it appears as a result of your uh, journalism, as a result of your investigation, the Zimbabwe government has said that they are investigating several individuals in the gold mafia. How does that make you feel? Well, th it appears that they're going after some of the mid-low level facilitators in the laundering or the smuggling operations. I mean, what our investigation shows and what the evidence shows is that the gold mafia exist there from, with the patronage from, from the very top, that the gold mafia are protected uh, by the, the ruling establishment in Zimbabwe. And what's being said clearly doesn't indicate that they're going after the, the gold mafia bosses themselves. I and mean, you, you saw in the, the uh, news clip there, the ambassador, Hubert Angel, uh, talking about this $200,000 payment that was going to give the, the um, get the president's blessing for the money laundering operation that our undercover reporters were, were su suggesting. And, and that's, that's, the ambassador is very clear to describe that as an appreciation. It's, it's certainly not a bribe because the, the president has so much money that uh, that, that two hundred and fifty sorry that two hundred thousand dollars barely scratches the surface. Mm. So, so when you when you've got an individual that's going to invest um, in excess of two hundred million in their own election campaign of their own money, I think you've got to question the ability of state institutions to effectively go after corruption when there is that level of individual control mm. uh, in the government process. That's our investigation and the evidence we present is showing. Uh, fascinating stuff. Alexander James, uh, good to speak to you. Speaking to us there, the reporter uh, on that investigation, speaking to us there from London. Thank you. Well, Zimbabwe's Minister of Information says the authorities are committed to upholding local and international laws relating to financial transactions, the trade of gold and other precious minerals. Government takes the allegations which are raised in this documentary seriously and has directed relevant organs to institute investigations into the issues raised there. Any person found to have engaged in acts of corruption, fraud, or any form of crime will face the full wrath of the law.